two. Wake up. Reverse, 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 rever
grace, it means you enjoy refreshments, network, and plug into the World Wide Web in our relaxing atmosphere. Located in Northeast Atlanta, the Web Zone Cyber Cafe offers a convenient and enjoyable location to check your email, surf the internet, print, scan, documents, and make copies. And then Visitors can connect to the internet using our high-speed computers and receive online assistance at no additional charge. Our 15-year-old oh, Square Cyber Cafe is staffed with highly qualified and knowledgeable trainers. Ask about our mobile training for seniors program. We deliver up to eight internet and computers to your community center and train seniors to effectively use the computer and safely surf the internet. Visit us <coughs> online at www.thewebzoneatl.com or call 770-465-4000 for more information and rates. The Web Zone. Get away and get online. Got your ticket already? Make sure you do for the late last hockey series that is coming up Saturday, June the 21st. That wasn't small. Well, you just came around the corner. <laughs> you just came around the corner with some tickets last <laughs> This is by Kenny Miles of the Rue Boys and the Point Blank Band. They are going to be killing it. The tickets are 20 bucks, so make sure you go to GwinnettCenter.com for it. You are tuned in to the Bianca Burwell Show on the Beatles Radio, your top 40 pop and R&B station, New Beat of Atlanta, also 93.1 FM in Toledo, Ohio. What's going on? People us. The call on number is 404-826-9223. We also have a listen line, Antonio. Yeah, the listen line is 401-347-0418. Just in case y'all can't get to a tablet, smartphone, computer, tune in app, anything like that, you can always just call in and simply just listen. Oh, yeah. Also, Dynamic Cuts, specializing in men and women's haircuts, facials, colors, razors, and eyebrows. 4112 Redan Road, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 404-297-9858. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Also, Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Check them out. Dynamic Cuts. Good job. Thank you. You got through that read, man. Terry, we've been struggling on that read. Don't boy. judge me from <laughs> yesterday. I'm telling you, I was we've hungry. We've been struggling on the live <laughs> read, don't, boy. Don't judge me when I'm hungry. <laughs> Stuff happens, all right? I'm like, Lord. <laughs> See, if you wanted me to get it right, you should have went out, got me a fucking chicken, and bam, it would have been cool. That's some Kool-Aid. Because you yeah. already got to wash it down. We appreciate all of our sponsors and partners. Definitely. Make sure you get your tickets for a Big Last Comedy Series. It's going to be off the chain. That is Saturday, June the 20th. First. All right, so Terry Moore is our special in studio yesterday, and he is no stranger to fighting uphill battles, naysayers, and encountering a lack of support. Being born with cerebral palsy, which is, for those of you who don't know, a disorder that can affect the brain and nervous system functions, such as movement, learning, hearing, seeing, and thinking. It has no way hindered. His accomplishments. Terry has over 20 years in the music business. He's worked with MTV, NBA Entertainment, Billboard Magazine, Virgin Records, First Priority Music, and artists such as Gene Baylor from the 90s R&B duo Jeanne, who I played to death almost every day while I was at K State. <laughs> Queen Latifah, Queen Latifah, and yeah. also I'm tripping. That's it. And also my favorite, my idol, MC <laughs> Light. Who I owe him so much for introducing me to you. <laughs> on your life. He's a motivational speaker, relationship marketing expert, and regarded as one of America's most successful disabled entrepreneurs based here in Atlanta. Well, all right. Did I do well? Oh, fantastic. Oh. I mean, I'm looking around the room like, okay, who's she talking about? <laughs> I love it. Queen between my tape of might be bad. <laughs> she ain't here. She all right. She listening. Yeah. She listening. No. She all right. And, uh, <laughs> Khalid Shahat, or Shahat, if I'm saying that right, but hello to you. We appreciate you for chiming in on um, the live feed there. You guys appreciate can watch it. everything that's going on, and the Q&A box is open. So. What's happening, Khalid? How's it going, man? <laughs> Definitely. So how you doing, sir? Man, I haven't seen you in oh, man. on the other side of the microphone in a minute. Oh, man, it's been good. It's been good. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm here. I'm breathing. Yes. 
Whew. And you know that's a you know that's a feat in itself nowadays. Yeah, it is. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm glad to be here. Most definitely. You know, we, we lost uh, Maya Angelou, and oh, we just my. recently uh, lost uh, Miss Ruby D. Yeah, yeah. And then we lost Alice from Brady Bunch a couple of weeks ago. Is that right? I missed that. Yeah, yeah. Alice from Brady. Yeah, we, oh, we lost all of them. All of them. Yeah. Did y'all know Rerun though. died? Huh? Did y'all know Rerun was dead? Once yeah, we passed, passed away a couple of years ago now. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Dwayne and Raj still alive and D is still alive. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But uh Shirley not though. Who? Shirley. Remember the one that played Shirley? Oh Shirley, yeah. Shirley, that's forgot about yeah, Shirley. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah so you know, we we lose them. We lose them. We gotta we gotta cherish them, treasure them. Yeah. Let them know why they still here. Give them the flowers, right? Give them the flowers for yes. real. Ruby D is like an icon. She man. is. My mom, um, she didn't know until I put the post up. Uh, and um, when she looked at it, she said, I didn't know she was such an icon. You well, know, that, that's yeah. part of her, you know, her yeah. generation. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, raising the sun now. You know what I mean? Raising the sun in the 1960s. It was uh, Sydney Portier. Yeah, Sydney Portier. Yeah. You know, and all the way up to uh, American, American Gangster. Yeah, that's right. Sure, that's, that's right. right. She she great 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 yeah, I, I actually have a few clips I will be playing later on. The oh, so, that's yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that, um, because she has a uh, there's a poem like I said called today. Well, alright. And that poem <laughs> uh, entitled today is just uh, it's phenomenal. Really, I'll try. It's really, really phenomenal, and I, I think you guys will really enjoy it. So. Man, so tell me, what's been going on, sir? You know, there's it, so many things that we can talk about. Oh, yeah. And we, I, we, I, I know we got to cover specific stuff. Yeah, we, you tell me, jump right in. We want to talk about our men. Our men. It's so many things that we can talk about. You know, um, we can talk about being an entrepreneur. We can talk about the music business. We can talk about networking. Um, so whatever, whatever topic you pick, I'll, I'll jump in. You want to know, like, uh, I'll tell you. Sure. <laughs> you know, I can tie it back to it. Yeah. You know, um, but you know, nowadays, and, and I talk about it, that is live radio right there, ladies and gentlemen. I the mic just failed. But you recovered. But I recovered. Yeah, recovered. At least it didn't happen on me. <laughs> <laughs> live radio. Oh, and I also want to say hello to uh, the Philippines. Oh, and so. uh, you know, of course, there's plenty of folks from Atlanta tuned in. North Cross, uh, Texas, as usual, a couple places in Texas, oh, uh, North Cross, and Texas. all the other folks. So we yeah. appreciate you guys for tuning in. And um, so, at any rate, you know, I talk about businesses, entrepreneurs, and mm -hmm. the music business quite a bit. And and the gentleman right here, Antonio Wolf, uh -oh. I mean, he's he's uh -oh. uh, uh, that's me. Um, our, our latest addition to the to the family. Uh -huh, I'm welcome. You know, <laughs> and uh, he's had he, he's from Chicago. Oh, shot town. Yeah, yeah made it out alive. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you know, he's had questions in regards to music business and okay. entertainment and things of that nature. And I think he would be a good person for you to ask some of your questions. Okay. Um, well, and then why you when you have the man here, I'm and ready. before I take over, because I will, <laughs> I will give you the opportunity to to speak to. Mr. Terry. You, you want to put on that court music right now? Okay. Well, first, starting off, how you doing? I'm good, sir. Doing all right. Lovely. All right. Good. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, most people in the music business want to be in the music business don't, don't really understand that it is just that, a music business. So just starting off, you're, you're pretty much starting off from the bottom. You have no money, you have somewhat of a talent, but you don't know how to develop it. You don't know how to bring your own, bring your own voice into something. You can mimic others, you know, you can mimic, uh, uh, you, you can mimic other popular artists, but you don't know how to make it your own. What advice would you give to artists? Uh, to develop their voice to make uh, a song their own song? Well, you know, first of all, ex excellent question because one of the things you have to do is you have to want to break away from the pack. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to be, uh, you've got to be someone that doesn't look like the same person in the crowd. I know the record labels sort of dictate that. In, and give you the impression that they want you to, to sound like a Beyonce or a Kanye, but you really have to um, strike your own chord. And in order to do that, you have to build your own brand, and you have to really develop your own image, your own style. 
you have to be able to go into the studio and whatever songs come up with, you know, as a songwriter, as a musician, as an artist, you have to be able to say, it sounds good to me. I don't know if it's going to sound great to everybody else, but I feel it. And um, you really have to just design your own destiny. Make it happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, also, just uh, coming in, most people don't really know like any warning signs, what to look for. There's a lot of producers out here that try to take advantage of you, studio owners and things like that. Do you have any uh, hints, warning signs that people could look for so they won't take it, get taken advantage of early on? Absolutely. The music industry is very, very small. Although people think that it's big, but it's very small. All the entertainment industries are small, whether it's film, music, fashion, all of it is very small. So first of all, you have to get out there and network. And once you start meeting uh, a lot of people, you're going to start being able to act when John Doe comes up to you and tells you he's worked with Kanye, he's worked with Jay-Z, he's worked with Beyonce. You'll actually want to be able to Google him. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you can Google somebody and see if they're really who they say they are. But because the industry is so small, you can ask other people, have you ever heard of John Doe? You know, I always tell people all the time, I've known Light since uh, she was about 16, I was probably about 18 or 19. And I tell people from uh, probably the last 25 years, 30 years, you know, that I, I've worked with life. And I tell people all the time, don't take my word for it. Google me. Ask people, you know, hey, I met this guy named Terry Moore. If you bump into light, and I've had people actually do that, <laughs> you know, bump into light and say, oh, yeah, I know Terry Moore. And so this industry is so small, ask around. Say, hey, listen, I met this entertainment attorney. He told me he worked for so-and-so. Have you ever heard of him? It's, the industry is small. People will definitely know. I, you know, I mentioned uh, Kendall Minster, an entertainment attorney, one of, one of my, my boys who I've known for almost 25 years. And sometimes I'll mention Kendall's name, and somebody's like, oh, I know Kendall. Mm -hmm. So absolutely ask around. You know, this industry is too small. And, and you know, there's a lot of people that are running a game on you. So, you know, don't be afraid to challenge them and say, well, give me some credentials. Who have you worked with? And let them tell you. Don't let them drop big names, but, you know, let them tell you. And if they do say, listen, I've worked with JD for the last 10 years, call JD the office up and speak to somebody and say, hey, I'm working with this guy. He said he worked with JD. The front office or the manager will say, I've never heard of him. Okay. That's absolutely worried. Also, yeah. um, Oh yeah. Also, when you were <laughs> he like the kid in the gang stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got so many questions going on. Oh, oh, no, uh, also, in Chicago, the main thing is uh, is pretty much get in the studio, make a video. That's how usually that's how usually Chicago artists do it, and then their performance just completely sucks. It is what it is. I recognize it. I got the head out, <laughs> and I was gone. But um, I like, you know, me, I, I would set up a performance before I set up a video and things like that. How important is that video? Like, is that, is like, is the video, the quality of the video, the, the video itself, is that very important more so than, uh, than just almost anything else? So what's the level of importance of that video? A video is important now because, you know, when I got into the industry in 86, 80, well, 87, I think I got in the industry, you know, what... The, the avenues that artists have now, we, you know, Light, Latifah, Puffy, Buster, when he was with new uh, leaders in the new school, we didn't have access to all of that. We, we, you know, we had to go to the labels to make a, uh, a $100,000, $200,000 video or something like that. But being now with, with the artists of today, you know, everything is so visual. Everything is so social media. So a video is very important. But the, what's going to separate you if you're doing a hip-hop video Dare and challenge yourself not to do a hip hop video like everybody else is doing. Don't have 30, 40 girls in the background dancing with you. Uh, you know, do something different. Do a, you know, what I miss from music videos, the music videos that used to tell a story. Yeah. You can watch the video and see a storyline happening. Like the Jackson Thriller. Exactly. <laughs> as opposed to watching a music video, especially hip hop, when you got, you know, 40 girls in the club with the bottles in the ear. I mean, it's been done, so do something different. And I guarantee you, if you do something different where you're telling a story, you'll get more hits than, okay, I've seen it before. The song is great, but the video looks the same. Do something a little different. Think outside the box. Absolutely. Also, um, I have, I, 
and very versatile. I, it's really hard for me to focus on one thing, so I try to be good at so many different things, such as writing, creating, movie making, uh, uh, visual, uh, graphic designing, uh, singing, songwriting, uh, uh, musicianship. Would you say that it would be better to actually just focus on one thing and hone that one thing instead of instead of trying to be good at so many others and have that versatility, or what would you what would you suggest on that? You know, my, my philosophy has always been if you can balance it, if you're a person that's organized and you can focus on, you know, this week I'm focusing on writing songs, and, uh, you know, and you knock that out, and the next week you're in the studio producing, and then you're knocking that out, and you have a, a set schedule and you know how to balance everything, and you're knocking everything out, you know, the way it's supposed to be handled, then I, I definitely agree to go for it because you could be in a studio with someone. Let's say, for example, you're in a studio with, I'm just going to throw uh, somebody out with, I keep saying Kanye West, but I want to keep saying, let's say you're in a studio with Bow Wow. And Bow Wow, you're, you're in a studio as a songwriter. Okay, Bow Wow brought you into the studio as a songwriter. And then Bow Wow gets the call that his producer is not coming to the studio because of whatever reason. And, oh, man, we got to cancel the session because my producer, you know, you can't make it like And then you can turn around and say, well, I produce. You know, so be able to have that, especially in the industry, be able to have that that that, that, uh, versatility. that, that versatility as far as being able to say, I do this, I do this, I do that, but do everything well. Do everything well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Done for now. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop you when you leave. Yeah. <laughs> really? Fine. <laughs> you. Can you give them the listeners a one? Let them know the name of the company. Company is called LearningMeTheBusiness.com. Uh, I do a lot of different things. I teach people about the music industry. I do inspirational speaking. I have people that actually call me. Uh, I've got clients across the country, and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, they'll call me. They'll schedule a time. We'll get on the phone and. They'll ask me questions about the music industry, pretty much what we're doing now. And then basically, if they say, hey, I need an entertainment attorney, I refer them to somebody. Hey, I need a producer, I refer them to somebody. So then my network becomes their network. Yes. And uh, one of the things, a lot of, uh, one of the reasons that a lot of clients enjoy working with me is because I'm sending them somebody that they can trust, and somebody that they say, okay, not to take advantage of me. And I've got a, a group of photographers, makeup artists, uh, across the board, so whatever they need. You know, I have a photographer in, in Chicago, Raymond Boyd, who shot for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, Raymond Ray Boyd and Beyonce and Little Kim and Destiny Child and you know, photographer in New York, talking you know, a photographer in, in California as well as Atlanta. So, you know, I just open up my network to my clients and we get on the phone and we talk about everything. And then on the other side, just inspirational speaker sharing my story about the music industry and about being disabled and, and if I can do it, anybody can. Yes, I can. I'm, I'm, I'm a testament. Oh, no, you're kind of like Superman right now. Oh, man, I knew it might be. I'm looking for a case. In the cave is a drag queen. There you go. Some people who want to start do not understand the type of wine, uh, the type of hustle um, that's necessary in order to make it, even to just get a demo tip um, to some of the executives. And you have a phenomenal story and how you contacted and got on with some you if you don't mind sharing with our audience. You mean when I first got into business? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. When I first got into business. You know, again, uh, all this stuff today, they, it's crazy the resources that they have access to that they don't really utilize it. And you know, when I got into the music industry, we're not talking CDs, we're not talking MP3. We're talking yes. albums, and I literally had to flip over albums in my house, look on the back of the album, Electra Records, Atlantic Records, find a name, and call that label, and hey, my name is Terry Moore, I'm interested in click, mm. hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I mean, I, I called a, a rec uh, about 100 recording studios, got a list together, wanted to work in a recording studio, and I called about 100 of them. Mm -hmm. And out of a hundred recording studios, I got up every morning like I was getting up and going to work. And not my job was to call these recording studios. And I would sit in the bed bedroom with the phone on the bed. We, you know, we're not talking cell phones or anything. We're talking about a dial pushing a button, <laughs> right, right. you know, and going through these studios and saying, "Listen, I, I work for free. I just want to get down. I was, you know, put me out. I work for free." And 
People laughed at me. People hung up on me. One studio told me to come in, Evergreen Studio in Manhattan, told me to come in. And i never forget, I met this guy on a Sunday. And he said, sure, you can come in and work for free. And he told me what I had to do. And my shift every Sunday for a year was 12 in the afternoon, 12 at night. Anything they wanted, I cleaned the toilet. I went out and got food. Um, I remember one time they sent me on a mission with, you know, I was, I was dumb and naive when I was going you know, to get in the music industry. <laughs> but you ever see those water coolers in an office with a big tank? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They actually told me to go uptown and pick up, <laughs> pick up one. Wow. I'm thinking I'm picking up a case of water. I got there and picked up this gigantic glass. Wow. This glass. Now, we're not talking glass. Yeah, yeah. Uptown and then getting on the train. I'm in New York now. Getting on the train, I can barely walk as it is. I gotta carry this thing up the up a flight of stairs on the subway, sweating and oh, my back was killing me by the time I got to the studio. But that was that's what I wanted. That's what I you know. And because I worked in the studio when I first got into the uh, the, the business, I worked with Yoko Ono, Boy Ears. Uh, David Belafonte, who was uh, Harry Belafonte's son, mm -hmm. uh, Brenda K. Starr, who discovered Mariah Carey. So you gotta gotta put in the sweat, yes. sweat, blood, and tears. But you gotta make those calls. And and now people got the internet. Just you can Google somebody and Any, get their name. And everything that they can do. And I do not understand why they do not take advantage. Oh, I had this <laughs> thirty years ago. I'm the <laughs> president of the last <laughs> I appreciate you sharing that story again because I, I never tire of hearing. Oh, appreciate that. And, and uh, because you know, just sharing with with the young ones, and of course, uh, you know, my children they get a crash course and all kind of stuff. My children they understand <laughs> things aren't easy. They don't come to you easy. I'm just trying to tell them not me. You know, you got you got to work hard at it. You uh, even if you don't like networking, you know you got to do it. Yeah, you got to. You yeah. have to. You gotta. You know, I, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, and in and, and the process of me going through record labels and trying to find a label to work with, I found a record label called First Priority Music. Yes. And I found out the phone number on the back of the record and called and found out the CEO for First Priority Music with Nap Out. Mm -hmm. And every week I would call First Priority Music and, hi, can I speak to Nat Robinson? And, oh, well, Mr. Robinson is not here because he messed it. That went on for a year. Mm. And finally, a year later, the receptionist finally said, I have to be honest with you, Nat never comes in. He never picked up his message. This is the answer service. Mm. I called that, that answer service <laughs> so much that me and the receptionist started dating. Really? I mean, we started, I mean, we started dating. I called so much. <laughs> so so <laughs> for, for a year, uh -huh. I called First Priority Music thinking I'm calling a label when it was just the answer service that, really? or messages that he never picked up. But the way the universe works, and I'm very spiritual, that a year, two years later, I wind up working for Nat Robinson. When I went to a meeting, I was hanging out with MC Search. Mm. Search was my boy. Search was one of the people that got me into the industry. Uh -huh. He said, hey, let's go to a meeting. And when I walked into this meeting, it was Melly Mel, Biz Markey, Lamumba from X-Clan, Milk, uh, Milk from Audio 2, and KRS-One. Mm -hmm. And because of search hyping me up doing that meeting, mm -hmm. Milk told his father Nat Robinson. <laughs> that was true. And that's how I started with the first priority meeting. Now that yeah. is odd. So yeah. how receptions looks though. Really? Um, she, she was cool. She was cool. You know what? We wind up becoming best friends after we still cool friends to the day. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Real cool. Yeah. yeah. How she looked though. I'll hook you up. I'll hook you up.
Uh, you didn't hear the sound because we were on a break. Usually during the break, we have to mute the sound. So, But if you want to hear everything, you can go to the bdropsradio.com on the desktop to be able to hear it. Or you can dial the listen number, which is 401-347-0418, and you'll be able to hear everything. Don't you know, since you mentioned uh, Naughty by Nature, uh -huh. and yeah. uh, Jean Bailey and John Ann had to. I got a naughty story for you, too. Uh, a, naughty, this, a naughty story. Oh, that's, that's what I'm talking about. The right call in now. number for those of you all that are listening and want to chit chat with uh, Terry Moore, the call in number is 404 826. 9223 again 404 826 9223. If you want to see everything that's happening as it happens, just go to the bjobsradio.com and click on watch live. And the QA box is open. Feel free to type whatever question or comment you have. Let me also say this because we had somebody already that just asked, Well, we go on a music break and you're watching live, you're not going to be able to hear anything because we have to mute it. We cannot broadcast. My license does not cover broadcasting through Google Medium and they have let me know. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that is why I have to meet. Uh, there you go. It's just yeah. business, not personal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I would love for you guys to, to hear absolutely everything, but Google does not permit that. So uh, I just want to make sure that you guys understand. They Google. sent me a wonderful letter. I had to respond. <laughs> <laughs> With a <the> letter head. <laughs> yes. So I Handle that. <laughs> We're trying to keep what we got over here. Well, for real. <laughs> <laughs> what? Guys, so we have a story that you have that you want to share. A story. A story. A story. A story. Tell you a story from the road. I got so many dog stories from the road. I got a book out. Yes. Called My Music Storybook. That uh, it's in ebook form. But I'm uh, working on getting it edited and putting it out there on Amazon. But it's a different, it's a collection of stories of my experience working with different artists, you know, in the music industry, uh, entertainment industry, I should say. So one day uh, I'm on tour. I'm traveling with Light and uh, and Audio Two, and it was a particular day I was tired. Went to the hotel room, laid down, and uh, there was a lot of noise outside of my room. And I was just, I was first I was trying to ignore it, I was laying in bed, and I'm like, okay, you know, sooner or later they're going to get quiet. <laughs> but that noise was going on constantly. I don't know what was going out, on outside of my room, right outside the door, but my patience was way in bed. <laughs> and the New York came out of me, and I was like, I sit, I'm tired of it, I'm going to open up the door and curse them out. As I got up and walked to the door, something told me, Look out the people first. <laughs> and I'm glad I did because when I looked out the people, there were uh, three guys rolling dice in front of my, my hotel door. Mm. And one of the guys was uh, Tretch from Nordy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, the, the real Terry and me said, You don't want to open up that door. Right. <laughs> Not with Tretch. You better go back to bed. Right. And that's exactly what I did because Tretch. Was known to carry a little something, something on him doing tours. Is that right? Yeah, well, definitely. And I've seen him pull. I've seen him pull out a little something, something on tour. Like, okay, okay, yeah, playing. We good. Yeah, you know, but trust and play. I remember one time we were on the road and and uh, we was at a hotel. I was I would remember it was an outdoor hotel. You know, with the doors on the outside. Yes. And uh, me and Latifa was actually standing outside talking. And it's about 11, 12 o'clock at night. And these guys had came to the hotel looking for their girlfriend. And wow. they was they was coming, you know, they had found out that the girl that came back to the to the rooms and Trent got into an argument with a bunch of them. And I remember he pulled up his shirt and he was ready to handle some business. Like, I might I might have a record. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, but I'm still from Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I'm like looking at them like me and Tifa look at it. They were serious and they the guys walked away. But he was <laughs> like, I don't care. I'm like, you know, I'm still Trent from Jersey. He like I, I had a record before I had a record. I had a record exactly. I'm Trent from Jersey. You know, don't come up in here with that. But I yeah, but nothing but love. But he, he he was definitely someone 
that I remember on the road, you know, gave you love, but he was like, don't play with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, naughty by nature. Naughty by nature. Yeah. Oh, Kevin's baby daddy. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. All right. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, I do too. That was that was interesting. It wasn't naughty like I thought. But <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was, it was, it was talk about your book. Uh -huh. You know, I, I want to talk about your book, and also you share with me previously about writing the book. Writing an ebook mm -hmm. and that that fascinated me mm -hmm. to where it made me go back oh. and pull up some stuff. Yeah, you know, uh -huh. he, he shared with us a, a number of things. For those of you on there, just tuning in, we're speaking with Terry Moore, which is CEO of LearnTheMusicBusiness.com, a business that you run with MC Light, right? Mm -hmm. Light is, but uh, you know, I gotta keep it. Light is like a sister. Light is like a silent, silent partner. You know, I call up when I, I got a question for, her, but you know, I do most of the grunt work. I call it light of light. Like, what do you think about this, yo? That sounds cool, man. Love it. Right. That's what I should say, too. That sounds cool. Yes, indeed. I, I still, you know, I was teasing hard in the mud. Ah. <laughs> I was like, she was like, is that cool? Man, my hair could have been standing on top of my head. I'm right next to you. We good. So, what, when, when, when you met uh, Light, what would be the thing that you say, wow, I never knew? Because people always think that. I'm not going to tell you what people always think. <laughs> Um, she was just really, really cool and uh, really yeah. approachable. Yeah. You know, and I wasn't quite sure, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. what direction it was going to be. I knew you. Mm -hmm. I was like, if she, if she keep working with her, she must be cool. But, uh -huh. you know, sometimes, you know, you meeting somebody for the first time, you're like, well, who is this buster? Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, but, but, yeah. But, but really, really cool, very approachable. And I told her that I said, I want to let you know that when I was younger, you were the one artist that I saw mm -hmm. that that convinced me that I'm able to mm -hmm. do this thing in entertainment. She was she's in wow. my bio. What? I never shared my bio with you. No, Dude, you gotta put that I gotta send it to you. I'm trying to tell you. You know, like you was the one. My my brothers, they was like, oh, I know you are like excited to death. My whole family out here. What? Yeah. Oh. I kid you not. Well, Matter of fact, when she was in New York and my other brother was living in New York, Rodney. Um, she was on some type of radio show, okay. and he called in. Uh, <laughs> he ne he never said who the person was, uh, but he was he was telling her that you know my sister at that time I was performing. Okay, you know he's like my sister, you know she really um, admires you. She da da da. da. She was like, oh, was she doing the right thing? You know, uh, just, I was uh, like, I couldn't uh, go that far. It was real loud, but yeah, yeah but yeah, they all know. What? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, most, most people think that she's not approachable because of her image. You know, she's got the rough and tough, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, a clam and roughneck. And most people don't realize how short she is. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, she's small. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can me up with her. Huh? You can me up with her. How long have yeah. I got you for? Do I have to work for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What time? Uh, it's 3 oh, yeah, yeah. 4.30? Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, with the, with the book, you know, you made me go back and say, okay, I need to pull out some of these things, and, and you know, there are others that ask questions in regards to e book and publishing or self publishing, right? Yeah. You know, what, what's the process that you went through? Could you tell us about your book and the process that you went through? Yeah, basically, you know, what, uh, I have two books out. One is called How to uh, Launch Your Music Career in 21 Days, and that's the e book. And then I put out another book. I started putting on Facebook. Um, Stories about the music industry, as far as my experience, like you know, working with Bill Smith, and and uh, I put up a story. And, and the way the the book is written is that I'll tell the story, but you don't know who I'm talking about until you get to the end of the, the chapter. And I started doing this on Facebook, and people just started, you know, really, really, uh, story, liking it and giving it a, a thumbs up. And somebody said. On a Tuesday, I never forget it. You should put you should put this into a book. And I said, Oh, okay, let me do that. Let me start putting these stories out there like that. And I actually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, started writing them all out on Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. Then I converted it to a PDF and turned it into an ebook and started putting it, built a web page, one, mm -hmm. one single web page with a PayPal link. Mm -hmm. And uh, sold it for eight ninety five. Mm. And the first day, about 30 to 40 people bought it. That's a lot. Yeah. 
So no, I definitely as far as you know, like I say, with technology nowadays, you know, I on my cell phone, my girlfriend gets on me about it all the time because I got about two hundred apps on my phone, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a I'm a app addict, mm -hmm. and I'm like always looking. I'm a one o'clock in the morning scrolling, looking, I'm looking for app. Like right? mm -hmm. let me try this one out. So then, you know, with technology now, you know, uh, I don't know, if, and I'm probably going to give away a real big tip, but this is uh, a website out there called Fiverr, and I think we yes. talk about Fiverr. Yeah, we talk. But, I mean, they're going to edit my book for five hours. Well, really about 20 bucks, they're going to edit the whole book. And that's huge when you go to uh, another company trying to charge you hundreds of dollars. Yeah. yeah. They're trying to take a five out of Yeah, for real. Most definitely. Yeah. yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so, I mean, technology is out there. That's hot. That's hot. Yeah, that's hot. That's real hot. Yeah. We had a call in, um, Douglas, you know. Oh, so. Yeah, we had a call in. And uh, he called on a break. So what he wanted to know is uh, what is the, or who is the, how do he word it? Who's is the it? artist that you would like to work with, that you would most like to work with, or? Who's, the, who's, the, best, who's the best? He said who's the best artist that you best like? the best artist that you would like Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you. Well, I've worked with, you know, I'll tell you that I've worked with so many people, um, like Kenny Smith with The Rocket, um, Bob Baldwin, got to give a shout out to Bob Baldwin, Life, 402, Positive K, everybody, you know, really, Latifa, everybody like family. Um, I haven't run into somebody that, I'm like, oh my goodness, was, I mean, because everybody's been professional, everybody's been, you know, real, real cool. I'll tell you the project that I, I've worked on it. Probably one of my father's moments with the uh, self destructing record. Ah. Yeah. So, working on that, that record with you, you know, that was a blessing. And uh -huh. uh, now I can tell you who I've met that I didn't think was too cool. Uh, Paul Abdul was a little little off to me when I met her. <laughs> I was like kind of looking at Paul sideways, like, I don't know. Carl Malone definitely had a problem with Carl Malone. Definitely. <laughs> But if I have to say, you know, out of everybody I met, with Janet Jackson and Madonna, Carl Malone probably was the one that was like, I don't have to meet him now. So, uh -huh. You know, he got that reputation anyway. Good. Yeah, he does. You know, he was the one that spoke out on uh, Magic coming back to the league. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. When, when Magic, you know, announced that he had an age right. and the Magic retired, mm -hmm. Magic did decide he was going to come back mm -hmm. after they realized, you know, you can't get it. From somebody breathing on you, mm -hmm. Carl Malone was the one that was like, "I don't want to play with him." Wow. Yeah, Carl Malone definitely very outspoken. Very outspoken. Interesting. Yeah. yeah definitely. So I guess you answered the other part of that. Yeah. <laughs> the other part of what does yeah. want to know is, you know, who was the biggest jerk? Yeah, the biggest <laughs> jerk was definitely <laughs> Carl Malone. <laughs> Some people in Chicago don't like him. Oh, for real? Really? Yeah. He was he was dirty to Mike. Oh, you ever yeah. seen Michael Jackson play? I mean, I'm Michael, sorry. Jordan? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Yeah. He's like Michael Jackson on the court, though. Yeah, like that. Oh yeah, Tom Jordan. He Tom Jordan. Yeah, he was. He was. You know, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan on the court was always real humble. He he had his competition, but he was never real dirty. Right, you know, he, right. He he beat you fair and square. You know, and uh, and with with Carl Malone, uh, he was just real dirty, just trying to do some underhanded elbow stuff. They didn't talk about Mike after Mike beat him at his own game. See that? You know what yeah. I mean? yeah, so cool. nobody in Chicago, you know, the, the old school, the yeah, old school, old school. That, that likes the that likes the old old school bulls. Yeah, the, the, they the no, nobody likes uh, wow, Carl. no love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the way I met him, I was at the NBA All Star Game in '92, and uh, he was standing on the opposite side of a friend of mine, um, a young lady by the name of Dion Alexander, who's a Celebrity hairstylist, and when I looked over to my right and I saw him, I'm like, "Oh, that's Carl Malone." So I pulled out a little piece of paper, gave it to Dion, like, "Yo, he is getting done." You know, in fact, I actually had a his basketball card. Mm -hmm. Can you ask him if he could sign it? And he signed it. So mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, let me go and at least say, you know, thank you." Right. Walked over to the other side, <laughs> they were stuck to him, and he acted like I wasn't even there. Wow. Act like I was talking to the air. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's like that. That's crazy, y'all. Yeah. Y'all hear this? Yeah. yeah. We got some new viewers that just chimed in. We oh, welcome. Terry welcome. Moore, Appreciate CEO, it. author, learningmusicbiz.com. And my new best friend. 
Mm. <laughs> and screen two, we're gonna connect on Facebook. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. I got I gotta delete somebody to bring you in though. Yeah. I'm I, at I five thousand. I, I noticed that. Oh, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, scrolling down. I, I wish Jimmy Carl Malone. Go I, with it. I wish Facebook was a little bit more like uh, Instagram, but it's like it doesn't put a cap on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's up with the cap. Memory. All right. I mean, he can. Folks have to get in a whole other page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I mean, it seems like Mark Zuckerberg could have figured out something. Something. Well, you know, they like control. They like control. Yeah, they like control. Yeah. 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 They're trying to yeah. take over the world. He's trying to gather yeah, all your information, but he don't want to give you no love. Yeah. <laughs> he said he's going to run for president, but he's skeptical because he don't want to get controlled by Rothschilds. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> The thoughts of Antonio Wolf or not, that'll be the end of the 3000. I know you got some things that are currently going on. If we can get into that when we come back from this segment, that'll be cool. Most definitely. All right. Definitely. Uh, yeah. One of your favorite projects. We'll be back after this. Uh oh. Be uh -oh. Uh -oh.
What's up, ATL? It's your boy, ATL, and you're coming in. You're coming in. on the chat. Back back to the radio show. They're getting a brand new show for the community. They say, and it's live right here on WTV. Dr. Radio. It's Thursday, 6 p.m. You're laughing. I hug you back. My hands on Saturdays noon to 1 p.m. You want to keep the mic right here on WTV. Yeah, I am. Oh. WTV. It's going to take care of you. The Web Zone, Stone Mountain's premier state-of-the-art technology center, invites you to listen to today's hit music, enjoy refreshments, network, and plug into the World Wide Web in our relaxing atmosphere. Located in Northeast Atlanta, The Web Zone Cyber Cafe offers a convenient and enjoyable location to check your email, surf the internet, print, scan, fax documents, and make copies, all in one location. Visitors can connect to the internet using our high-speed computers and receive online assistance at no additional charge. Our 1,500 square feet cyber cafe is staffed with highly qualified and knowledgeable trainers. Ask about our mobile training for seniors program. We deliver up to eight internet-ready computers to your community center and train seniors to effectively use your computer and safety search the internet. Discuss online at www.thewebzoneatl.com or call 770-465-4000 for more information and links. The Web Zone. Get away and get online. You are tuned into the Beyond the World Show on the Beat Just Radio. Yeah, it's time for the Pauline on the stage. Why are you laughing, Antonio? I like the way you came in on that. Yeah. You, you hit it when the beat drop. Yeah. <laughs> that was dope. When the beat drop. Hey, you saw the uh, advertisement for James Brown, you know what I'm Yeah, I saw that. That was dope. When, when does that begin to do? I don't remember, but I'm probably going to check out another trailer that's long. I'm, I'm going to. Really? Yes. It's an off. I'm going to go see that. Hmm. I don't typically mention things that, you know, I'm not getting paid to mention, but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to go see that. Terry over there laughing. You know what I'm talking about. Yo, take, <laughs> me, take me with you. I'll bring some chicken up in the plastic bag. Really? Really? What? You know how we used to do it. Come on, man. You're from North. <laughs> Midwest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you only people, in, only, Right, only people that go to a buffet with plastic sandwich bags with them as some point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, you know. <laughs> He know <laughs> New York in the building. <laughs> Man, I have enjoyed so much um, sitting down and talking with you. Like, like, you know, can, can you tell us about uh, some of your current projects that you have going on, Mr. Terry? Ah, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, actually, this Sunday, June fifteenth, me and uh, two brothers uh, by the name of David Ali and Focus ATL. Is doing a out of the box networking event, and that out of the box networking event is God night. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we've uh, we put together an event, and we're gonna uh, you know people gonna be on the ground networking. And for those that want to also skydive, we're gonna jump. We jump in from We jump in fourteen thousand feet. Wow, that's uh, not. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's comfortable it. right there. Yeah, right. Sorry. Float on down. I just read something prior to coming here that uh -huh. President Bush celebrated his 90th birthday by the Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Just one time. I'm trying to do it on the regular. I'm going to do it. I'll be there one time. I can't. Can we jump with my shoe down here? Can shoot open? Apparently, so we're going to read about him dead or something. No. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping with a, with a, a skydive on my back. So I'm not doing it by myself. Then I'm not doing it. All right. I got somebody on my back. I, <laughs> you know, somebody. Uh, <laughs> 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 I might have some flashbacks or something. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? What made you guys, uh, what made you choose that? Well, well, you know, I've been saying for a couple of years that I was going to do it. And uh, Focus, I mean, he's a pro at it. He's been doing it for many, many years. Well, you know, he's been doing it for many, many years. Well, you know, he's been doing it for many, many years. Well, you know, he's been doing it for many, many years. This will probably be his fourth or fifth jump. Uh, we talked about it, but let's just do it and get a bunch of people to come out. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. So yeah. Sunday. It's yeah, free. Sunday. So that's Sunday. That's the first event. Second event is uh, if you're in Atlanta, June 21st. Uh, come out to the gallery. Is it earlier? Yeah. 
Yeah. Really? Yes, yeah, it's going to be 11 and 2. 11 and 2. making no conflict. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> like, no, got 11 and yeah. You got beef? What's 11 and <laughs> Now, you can come, you know, come and hang out and be back at uh, Bianca's event before uh, 3 o'clock. But yeah, 11, 11 and 2 is going to be um, conversations with Terry Moore. Just come hang out with me. We're going to yes, talk about the industry. I, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, come hang out with me, talk about the business, talk about relationships. And uh, I'm also working on a third event with Diana Lynch from Lynch Law Group, law firm with them together, the music seminar. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Got, got to give my girl, Miss Angela, my my honey, my baby, got to give her a shout out <laughs> for her lovely baby. And uh, my son, Joy, who just did as well. This guy. Yeah, you gotta do that. Yeah, you gotta do that. Don't you don't need old meatloaf. You know better. Now that is fun. Like the I hear nothing. Like what? I ain't heard. Oh, you think you get dessert, huh? Better drink this coffee and shut up. That's funny. Yeah, that's what's going on with me. Everything is love. You know, pushing it in a. You know, I'm always speaking somewhere. So to all the, for all the cheap brothers out there, uh, is a skydiving event free or how much is it? Skydiving event is not free. You can jump uh, without a camera or photographer for about 150 but if you want to capture the magical moment on the way down <laughs> 250 you're going to have somebody videotape and take pictures of you. Ain't nobody going to be capturing that. They're like, the whole way. Making life way. Oh. you imagine somebody... Going down with you and he's taking pictures and videos. Laughing at you the whole time. Just <laughs> <laughs> I'm going down with my eyes closed. I already know. Eyes closed and a diaper on. <laughs> you know, we just gonna we just gonna prepare for it like that. You know, word, praising God all the way down. Word, you know. You yeah, have to have enough pampers that day. You know, what I'm saying? you know how you start. Uh, Apologizing for stuff you did yeah, yeah, yeah. 14, 15, 20 years ago. I'm so sorry. I'm I never sorry. Did it again. Let me get out. If you let me get out this, I swear I won't steal no more crayons. I'll sing in the choir and, and I'll go to mass every you other know, Sunday. Right. You start talking about you going to church every Sunday. I won't Sunday. steal the wine on communion and exactly. I won't steal exactly. no crackers no more. Exactly. That's funny. You know? so yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. I'm going to bring right. cheese with this well, communion. I'm, I'm glad. You know. That you're doing something. Is that something that was on your bucket list? That's on my bucket list. Yeah, that, that wasn't on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not on my bucket list. Uh, probably, my wasn't on, probably wasn't on a lot of people. No, my son just mouthed me. It's on his list. It's really? on his list. There you 14. go. It's 14. 14. That's what's up. One time. I'm not trying to do it on the regular. It's <laughs> one time. You know? Ah, okay. Yeah, I got to talk about my girl, too, because uh, she initially was doing this with me. Mm. Baby, I, I'm with you. You know what you told me about a week ago? I Tell me. You know, you know change them. <laughs> I just not change them. That, that date got <laughs> Yeah, so, And YouTube is a wonderful thing, but it's also a curse. Exactly. You know, YouTube, like, let me just look up real quick. I'll look at that. I'll look at that. I'll look at that. Yeah. Oh. Side. But you know, it's only like a three minute, you know, you, you actually fall for a couple of minutes and then the the, the, the free fall is like the six minutes, you know, while you're with the, yeah. the parachute. It goes by yeah. real fast. It's about like, right? not even 10 minutes. As he, right. I was in the military and, that was, and we used to jump from 8,000 to 10,000 feet. So y'all doing it for oh, 14. So you see, no, we know. So y'all doing 14,000. So y'all going to have fun. We know. We, we, have already to, we automatically, we immediately had to prepare. <laughs> so we from 8,000. You had to pull the shoot quick. Yeah, he had to do it. Ah, see, he was. I mean, I'm about to tell you. I'm over 80, 80, 80 jumps a month. A month. No, he, so, I mean, first of all, he's from Chicago <laughs> and he's jumping out of plane. Soldier right there. That's a soldier right there. You know, so. he's in in the hood. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Somebody come through that door right now, he got you. Man, he got you. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You seen how I made my chicken yesterday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 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 how, can, uh, how can people get in contact with you? Oh, man, go to Terry. TerryMoore.com. Uh, TerryMoore.com, and definitely send me a message. Say what's up. Uh, if you're looking for somebody to come out to speak to your event, definitely reach out to me at TerryMoore.com. And if you're looking for somebody in the music industry to coach you on what to do and what not to do and the right people to meet, 
definitely reach out to me on uh, terrymore.com. You'll see a link to Twitter, my Facebook page, but the best way to reach me is to uh, send me a message through the website. You can't get to me on Facebook right now. I've got 5,000, so if you try to add me, it ain't going to work. So definitely just send me a message on uh, yeah, on my website, yeah. It, it ain't going to work. Yeah, I got a, I got a 5,000, <laughs> and I've got about 187 waiting, and I don't even know what I'm going to do with them right now. Oh, they still show up as waiting? Yeah, still show up. You can tell that from somebody ain't at 5,000 yet. <laughs> now, you'll get that little, like, so-and-so, you know, you got these friend requests waiting. Like, yeah. I can't do nothing with them. Right sneak up on you, yeah. right. I mean, every time I turn around and somebody asks, I need a friend request. Oh, yeah. Request, oh, yeah. You know, and that, I'm at the point. Now, I do have three pages already. Oh, see, I, I have the I Connect You Digital Magazine one. Uh, I picked that back up. I'll be in the entertainment one. How do you manage it, bro? That's the thing that I'm wondering about. Like, how can I manage The posts, I do. The, no, I don't. Just my posts are, are like who tweet. I use who Okay, who tweet me? Go. I have a link to where. You know, at least like the promos for the show and all that was still posted. Right, okay, I got so you. So occasionally I do have to go there. I go there like once a week. Ah, yeah. To look and see, okay, I accept it. Yeah. Accept that or whatever. Yeah. That's what I do. You know, I, I'm actually was very surprised because, you know, when I was looking through my friends list the other day to see, okay, who's really not on my page, it's like, okay, let me go. No, nah, no, nah, they stay on my page. No, no, no. So it's, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, yeah, I appreciate it. I, 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 all my Facebook fam that's out there listening right now, appreciate the love. Yes, indeed. Most definitely. And I appreciate you, man. Oh, likewise. Good likewise. friend of mine, Terry Moore. Yeah, you know, I'm glad to be here. I appreciate you for stopping by. We're going to get some pictures real quick for you. Leave. Oh, most no, definitely. Let's do it. I try, I try to uh, time it real good. So, yeah, do it. Yeah. We'll be yeah. back after this. Keep it live right here on the Bianca Burrow Show. Eric B. and Rakim. Oh. Keep it live. Eternity.
You are tuned in to the Beyond the Burwell Show on the Beat Josh Radio, your top 40 pop and RV station, the new beat of Atlanta, and also 93.1 FM, Toledo, Ohio. We just had CEO, author, friend, Terry Moore in the building. I'm pretty sure you guys enjoyed everything he had to say. I know you did. The music business god, Terry Moore. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. <laughs> Worship him. Really? <laughs> I don't know about that far. But he's a really good friend of mine. And um, I appreciate every time he takes a moment to come by the station and just share things with us. Speaking of going by somewhere, Deborah Malore, Master Cosmetologist. Located at 4405 Rockbridge Road in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Her specialties are relaxers, cuts, weaves, updos, and more. So make sure you contact Deborah Valor, 404-389-0953, and make your appointment today. All right. Lord. One more again. <laughs> Deborah Valor. Master cosmetologist specialties are relaxers, cuts, weaves, updos, and more. 4405 Rockbridge Road, Stone Mountain, Georgia. 30083 is the zip code for those of you that need to put it in your GPS. The number is 404-389-0953. Master cosmetologist, Deborah Valor. Check her out. There we go. My bad. I'm like, you do that every time. <laughs> like, every time. I'm sorry. Yeah, do a little read. No. Oh, man. Also, too, if you haven't gotten your tickets yet for the comedy show. Big Lance. Big Lance comedy show. Big yeah, Lance. I like the laugh. MC Lightfoot is hysterical. He travels around with so many artists, including Angie Stone, um, Frankie Beverly and Mays, Anthony Hamilton, Kim. I mean, I, I can't, man, there isn't too many that he hasn't toured with. Hilarious. If you haven't had an opportunity to check out his type of comedy, I'm telling you, you're going to fall out because he's a fool. <laughs> yeah. Kiana Dancy from Bounce TV's Off the Chain. Also, she's a very good friend of mine as well. Kiana Dancy will be hosting, and also she will have her own little segment there as well. I like it. Rod Minger, good friend of ours, good friend of the station. He's going to be opening that thing up. We have an opening act, musical act, Vincent Clark. It's a group. R&B group. So they're pretty good. I guess they're just, there's one. Yeah. Since they got one name. Just, that's yeah, one. Vincent Clark. Okay. Yeah. Not to mention uh, Kitty Miles and the Point Blank, Blank Band. <laughs> Kitty Miles and the Point Blank Band. There we go. They Point will be performing. Blank. And if you're familiar with Kitty Miles and the Blue Boys, and also he had his own project where he toured Tokyo. For a year, all around up and through all Japan, and phenomenal artists. He's performed with quite a few people uh, as well: Yolanda Adams, uh, Christina Aguilera, Mariah Carey, The Roots, and the list goes on. Uh, how many? He, was, he also had his uh, acting debut in, in the movie Life with uh, Martin Lawrence and um, who was that? Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, Bernie Mac. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we, we've got an all-star lineup for you. It is going to be a great show. Again, the, the cost is 20 bucks. The tickets are selling now. Just go to GwinnettCenter.com. GwinnettCenter.com, you'll see Big Laughs Comedy Series. This is volume one, so we're going to be doing more. But this one is a one-night-only situation, so you want to make sure you get those tickets as soon as possible. Because they are selling out quick. I ain't got no more, so let me talk about, hey, 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 Wolf, hey, give me the hookup. I ain't got no hookup. 
They all gone. He said, but I took too long. <laughs> Get your tickets. Those of you guys that are, I can't believe you guys. Those of you guys that are in the Atlanta area, there's another Amber Alert. Amber Alert, apparently in Duluth, Georgia. Child was taken. Intern, can you pull up for me the the license number on that, please, so we can read out what it is? I want people to be aware of it because you never know when it's your child. You definitely you know how we are when it's something that's affecting us directly. You mm -hmm. want the whole world to know. So Duluth, Georgia, it's an Amber Alert. License plate number P is in Paul. I Q as in quick. <laughs> Uh, 9426 Georgia Plate 2000 Blue Chevrolet Ventura Van. That's what it is. Always so, a van. That's what we're looking for. And uh, this alert came up 10 minutes ago. So you guys be on alert. Those of you all that are riding around in the area, and there's quite a few of you all that are listening. Duluth, Georgia area. So license plate number PIQ 9426. And it's a 2000 Blue Chevrolet Ventura Van. So. It's just crazy, man. People be snatching other people's children. You know what I mean? Like, good gracious. I got enough of my own. I ain't trying to add. <laughs> <laughs> I am not trying to add news. I am cool. Now, we are saying farewell to actress and civil rights activist, Miss Ruby D. And how familiar are you with uh, Ruby D? Some more familiar. Um, I'm more familiar with her. Uh, husband Ozzy Davis, Ozzy Davis. You know, he uh, he did a uh, Malcolm X eulogy and anybody who knows me knows I'm a huge, huge fan of Malcolm X. Although he was though he passed he kind of always been a mentor to me. But um but they uh, they both they both have been uh, very, very huge, very, very impactful in the civil rights civil rights movement all the way up um, all the way up until their deaths. They all always had a voice and they've always uh, they've always spoke on what's right. And uh, they are, I think both of them will, will be very, very much so missed. We have lost two great icons. And, uh, man, and my Angelo and Ruby Dean, and uh, unfortunately, it's just sad. It's sad that we had to lose them. Yeah, you know, um, Ruby Dean is from Cleveland, Ohio. And I didn't realize that until actually looking at her bio. So. I'm just kidding. I'm going to turn that right now. But anyway, um, from Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, she was born in 1924, October, I believe, October 27, 1924. She grew up in Harlem and joined the American Negro Theater in 1941. She is well known for collaborations with her husband, actor Ossie Davis, Dean's Film career spans a generation and includes 1950s The Jackie Robinson Story, 1961's A Raisin in the Sun, and 1988's Do the Right Thing. In 2008, Dee received her first Oscar nomination for playing Mama Lucas in the hit film American Gangster. Matter of fact, if y'all don't remember how, how that American Gangster is, listen. I never asked you where all this came from because I didn't want to even lie. I didn't want you to worry about it. Now, come on, don't lie to me. Come on, come on. Do you want to? Do you want to make things so bad for your family that they leave you? Because they will. She will leave you. Oh! <laughs> 
That's some acting right there. Man, how many people you know slapped in jail and got away with it? <laughs> you slapped him, I leave you, boy. <laughs> but Ruby D, man, I, it's so many, so many things that can be said about her. Again, as you mentioned, very good friends. Her and her husband, uh, Asi, were very good friends with uh, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. And fought for so many things. Matter of fact, even there was a, a like a close-up, one-on-one type of interview with herself and her husband where she was talking about different roles and she hated for them to have to do something with her hair. <laughs> hated it because she said they didn't know what to do with her hair. And she said one particular um, place that she had gone and she was waiting and they were like, what are you going to do with your hair? She said, she couldn't remember who the young lady was that tapped her and said, you ought to say something about them having some black hairstyles. They need black hairstyles. And she said, you know what? You're right. And from that point, she had spoken up. And, you know, I'm just telling you, that people have done things that you have absolutely no idea that they were instrumental in bringing about. Just saying. Because they were used to movie stars not looking like us, not looking like you are. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the hair is not like you and I. Mm -hmm. With that being said, having somebody like that, a pioneer, someone who wasn't afraid to speak. And she also, you know, did some spoken word pieces and all kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Go be deep. And she had that voice. That deep, that, that profound voice. You know? That's commanded you really to listen. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she is definitely going to be missed. Yeah, she's going to be missed. So she's. She's, she's been in so many productions. She also was a screenwriter. She was an actress, an activist, and just all kinds of things. And it, it's a couple of things I want to do, but I'm trying to figure out the order I want to do it. Close personal relationship with, with many people in the uh, civil rights movement as far as making Edgar Evans, Dr. Marshall, uh, uh, Shirley, Shirley Chisholm, uh, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, you know, and uh, man, if y'all don't remember her or not, do the right thing. She, her oh my and goodness. Ozzie Davis yeah, they both was, were, was in uh, Do the Right Thing, and they both had <laughs> had uh, deep roles. And, I mean, now, I just want to say this, you know, D, Ruby D did not just sit. I oh no, she no, didn't. No. You know, she continued to perform into you know the, just as a recent. You know, her most recent work was uh, Tenere Lifetime Movie Original with Betty and Coretta. Mm -hmm. You remember that? I remember them talking about it, but I, I didn't. Oh, man. They, you're missing out. I know. You're missing out because they have some really, really great movies, documentaries, or whatever that come on in. I don't ever, ever I never see them, uh, I never see catch when they're advertising documentaries. I always see their Lifetime movies, so of course I never. Well, the Lifetime movies, you know, they still like true to, true to life. Well, you say that, but I'm telling you, it's, it's something you might want to consider. I'll consider it. You know, even Mr. Burwell watched Lifetime. Once he saw, he was like, you know what? I was like, it's pretty cool, ain't it? It ain't just a, a feminine type. It ain't, it ain't that. It's, it's stories, telling stories. I don't consider True it. stories. Just saying. Just the same lifetime. Is that I'm what it is? I'll consider no. It's not that. The, the, the movies that I did catch on there, they just weren't very good. To me. Pick the way it was. Everything that come on TV I ain't good. I don't know which ones. I don't even watch TV like that. Oh, no. I stream a lot of times. Well, Betty and Coretta, that followed the lives of, of course, Coretta Scott King, played by Angela Bassett, and Betty Shabazz, played by Mary J. Blige, after That's the funny. assassinations of their husbands. That's actually funny, because uh, Angela Bassett played uh, Betty Shabazz <laughs> after the assassination of Malcolm and actual Malcolm X and uh, the movie Panther. Mm -hmm. well, that was kind of ironic. Yeah. That she turned around and played uh, Coretta Scott King. Well, yeah. Like that. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Angela's real flexible. Huh. She can do all kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I, I really like Angela Bassett. It's not too many actresses that I can say that, but I really like Angela Bassett. Yeah, and, and she takes her time to choose the the correct role. She said it before. She always wanted to choose the right role. She didn't have to take everything that came out. And most of the movies that she's been in has been an empowerment, uh, a coming of, you know, it's been a strong woman. Tina Turner, mm -hmm. strong woman, you know. And just like as you mentioned, it's always been 
uh, coming up, and even um, how Stella got a groove back. You yeah. know, a, a woman that had gone through all kinds of crap. That was sort of coming up, you know, type of uh, coming mm-hmm. into life type of mm-hmm. role as well. That was, you know, that type of thing. So yeah, I really like that for myself. She's definitely uh, <laughs> my woman crush Wednesday every every week. Did you say woman crush? <laughs> yeah, woman crush. <laughs> woman crush. Is that what they call that? Yeah, that's what WCW. You never seen that on IG? I've seen some some stuff, but I was like, let me. Is yeah. That what we doing? I don't participate in it much. I probably did a couple times, but. Oh. I really don't. I don't get that excited over anything like that. Oh really? I don't. It's no, no real point. Oh, you like her? So. Oh man. My event is pumped. <laughs> so what we do? Before we close out, though, we I am gonna play that that poem today that Ruby Dean gave. Okay. Come on, we just call it today. I'm not gonna do it just yet. Okay. We got a few minutes. I just wanted to mention. Everybody knew about all of what happened with. Dr. Dre becoming the first hip hop billionaire, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Selling the headphones Beats by Dre, mm-hmm. and them things are freaking expensive. Mm-hmm. That damn. Do you have some Beats? Of course not. Yeah, not I said B unless somebody is gonna sponsor that. Exactly. Uh, but I heard of them though. And how do sound? Oh my God, they are they have- wonderful. You can hear every little perfection, imperfection. Is they are they are good. Really? Yes, they are good. Right. I had the money to to spare, waste, whatever you want to call it. If I had the money for that, then I would definitely invest in those. Really? Mm-hmm. I'll have to consider. Right now, my, my budget ain't fixed up like that. Yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not fixed up like that. Oh, and man. Work, man. Roll with them. Well, apparently, someone else had a wonderful payday, and that is LeBron James. LeBron, LeBron. LeBron James had a wonderful payday. Once that once that happened, he made more than thirty million in cash and stock when Apple paid three billion for Beats Electronics. Wow. That's that's coming from ESPN. Uh, apparently, this is what happened. LeBron took a small stake in Beats Electron Electronics during its inception back in two thousand eight. Mm-hmm. Right in the beginning, he was like, you know what, bro, I'm gonna help you out. I'm going in and in, in invest a little bit, working closely with producers and company founders. Jimmy Levine and Dr. Dre to promote the company's premium headphones. For context, James is paid $19.1 million a year by the Heat to play basketball. Okay. That's what he got paid like almost twice. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying. So his Beats deal netted him more money this year than uh, basketball did. Wow. Um, the news was buried in, buried in a much bigger story, apparently, about the future of the Heat. They all reportedly um, are, are interested in signing Carmelo Anthony. This song, have you heard him? I heard of that. All right. Apparently, he's a sought after NBA star or whatever. Um, so, James and the Heat and others will have to renegotiate their contracts, potentially taking less money because of it. So, James' off court endorsements and investments are doing so well that he might be willing to take less money. Yeah. So in a weird way, Apple's purchase of Beats could lead to the Heat getting Anthony, creating a dynasty in the NBA. No, I'm not that's what they say. Business Insider. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that. I, I think that good competition should be should should be spread out. I don't think all of them should crowd in one team, and uh, good talent should crowd in one Man, team. Man, the Spurs is killing right now. Even though I love. Yeah, but they had to develop that. That that wasn't just oh you're good you're good you're good come on. Well, that was I mean, they, they, they all developed over time. The Heat, they only, they, this is they, you know, they haven't played. The Heat was superstars on their own team before before they actually came to the Heat. Yeah, we just got the, these. But their superstars. first time that they went to the playoffs, they didn't make it. Yeah, but that's because LeBron did the same thing he did last game. I'm just saying, they they didn't make it. So this is like what? Yeah, they, they had to learn how to play like? together. That was, that was different, but I'm. Just, but all I'm saying is that <laughs> you wouldn't see, like I said, you wouldn't see Jordan, Magic, and Bird on the same team trying to make it. You know, they all did their own thing. They were respectable, you know, and uh, kind of did what they had to do to develop it and did what they had to do to earn their way. So I, I really just don't agree with it. That's just my thing. I'm like this. LeBron has already been in a situation, especially with Cleveland, when he just did not have help. And that's the reason why he left Cleveland. You know, it's not that he didn't want to stay. He did, but things like, look, how long am I supposed to stay here and not? I want to ring, and I am not mad. Even when 
President Obama was saying LeBron should stay. The hell. That's how I felt about it. it this is this. I didn't agree with him staying with Cleveland, but I didn't agree with him staying with. Uh, I didn't agree with him going to. Uh, but I did. I definitely didn't agree with him staying with Cleveland. Well, where would you have preferred that he went? Uh, honestly, I don't remember because I remember who I was in. Uh, who I was in the league at that time. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I, I really don't. Oh Lord, have mercy! Like I just weird. didn't want them to go there, but they won. It worked. Mm. He got he got his he got two rings. He trying to get a third, but is it? I don't know. Yeah, he got to uh, snap going. the Apple Store and show up on the court if he wants to do that. They did pay him more. <laughs> True that. <laughs> they huh. did pay him more, so I can't be mad at the brother on that one. He like, look, I just got thirty million from from this beef deal. <laughs> Y'all gave me nineteen point one. Went sun around yeah. like a bunch of rocks. Ran around. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor Bell, shout out. Mayor Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh, man. So, you know. Hey. I'm not mad at it. LeBron, do your thing, man. You rich rock. Ran around. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy, man. So, I, know. I think this is the first time I'm going to end the show a little bit differently. Like I said, um, I'm going to play the poll. That will be gave. Um, it, play it was, today. Yeah, I'm gonna play the poem today. Today. Okay, what's the poem? It's called today. Don't start that. What he's wait, what he's on about? Yeah. It's today. So. You're gonna play if, it tomorrow. If you haven't done it, please like us on Facebook. Go to thebejoshradio.com and you'll see the app. And then talking about the finger. And that'll take you directly to our Facebook fan page. Click on that and invite all of your friends to like us as well. Some people have asked, how can they be on the Be Just Radio, like Terry Ball was earlier? All you have to do, there's a contact page on there. All you have to do is click on the contact, click on the contact, and send us links to your bio. Well, actually, send us your bio. But links to any type of um, websites, YouTube videos, any of that, and uh, let us know what you have going on. Because I love highlighting entrepreneurs, business owners, startups, musicians, indie artists, and all of that. I love doing that. Now, I'm glad you mentioned that indie artists that want to submit your music to be considered in rotation. Right on the front, the home page at the top right. So it's going to be on the right-hand side in yellow and says submit your music. Click on that and you'll be able to upload your music directly to the Beat Drops Radio. Just upload it. Now, there is a submission fee. This has nothing to do with getting guaranteed airplay. Don't get it confused because we get a lot of submissions. And I, I just listened to three last night. Three last night. So, you know, when there's a whole lot of songs that are submitted, that's, that takes time out of the day. So it's a small fee. And uh, as long as you're with BMI, ASCAP, CSAC, or Sound Exchange, you'll be able to uh, recover your monies via royalties that are paid. Just saying, some don't understand that. This well, is they, a business. <laughs> they need to uh, understand the business before they're trying to submit their music. Indeed. Yes, so follow us on Twitter at Beat Jobs Radio. My Instagram handle is Bianca underscore Burwell. And what is yours? That's on Love True Production. All right, so right here, we're going to close it out with Ruby D, who will be missed. Oh, and uh, given to me uh, by a dear friend of mine, Bea Richards, who was herself a deeply committed and active woman. It's called Today. I like that beginning of that word, today, today, today is ours. Let's live it. And love is strong. Let's get it. A song can help. Let's sing it. And peace is dear. Let's bring it. The past is gone. Don't ruin it. Our work is here. Let's do it. Our world is wrong. Let's write it. The battle hard. Let's fight it. The road is rough. Let's clear it. The future vast. 
don't fear it. His faith is asleep. Let's wake it. Today is ours. Let's take it. The station with the best music. 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 Best music.